Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Entertainment proudly announces the release of Karate Warrior. While visiting his father in a remote village, young Anthony Scott discovers the magic of romance. The dangers of adventure. <laughs> and the consequence of confrontation. Okay, that's enough! Oh shit, now what? Smile! Oh. Let's get out of here. I'm willing to apologize. With the help of Grandmaster Kimura, he learns to use his inner strength to overcome his fears and challenge that evil which brings threat to the village. secrets of his art. But most of all, Kimura has taught you to be a man. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Karate Warrior. This is disc number 53 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. And uh, this is what is written on their website. Anthony Scott... Uh, heads to Manila for a chance to reconnect with his father, played by Jared Martin. But as soon as he lands in the sweltering heat of the Philippines, Anthony swiftly finds himself on the wrong side of Quino, a local gangster, who also happens to be a badass karate champion. It's terrible when that happens. After a royal smackdown, Anthony vows to get his revenge and seeks help from the mysterious master Kimura. The man responsible for teaching Quino his formidable fighting skills before he turned to a life of crime. Anthony is soon under Kimura's tutelage and en route to mastering the art of the dragon blow. From F Fabrizio Di Angelis of Killer Crocodile comes Karate Warrior aka The Boy in the Golden Kimono. A very Italian take on the Karate Kid featuring an early lead role for future Italian megastar Kim Rossi Stewart. Karate Warrior features a host of cult cinema talent, including the lovely Janet Agron of Hands of Steel and sporting a pulsating soundtrack from BAFTA nominee Simon Boswell of the Crying Game fame. 88 Films are proud to unveil this gorgeous 2K restoration of a cult classic beat em up that spawned five sequels. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no, make the bad man stop. Uh, special features on the disc are a limited edition gloss old card slipcase for the first run prints only, which I have. Brand new 2K remaster from the original 35mm negative and 185 1 aspect ratio. An extensive cleanup and colour correction carried out in the UK. 
a remastered uncompressed English audio, optional English SDH subtitles, alternative longer Italian version featuring a remastered uncompressed Italian audio with the newly translated subtitles. Lightning in Kimono, uh, interview with Giuseppe Pinori, Cinema of the Underdog, Mike Leader on the legacy of martial arts cinema, The Cynic, The Rat and The Karate Warrior, a feature of Eugenio Ercolini detailing on better lenses involvement in the Karate Warrior franchise and the reversible sleeve with the Italian title. Technical specs, region lock to region B, audio's LPCM stereo, Pictures 1080p, HD 185 1, runtime, hour and 25 minutes, languages English and Italian, and subtitles are English. So, this was a first time watch for me, but to be honest, I was kind of interested about this one. The main reason behind it is for the director. Fabrizio De Angelis is legendary um, for, for those that are of the persuasion of checking out like Italian schlocky movies. Uh, and specifically those that have a passing interest in the old uh, video nasty list, um, you will find as you work your way down several references to a little movie called Dr. Butcher MD from 1979, which this dude did, but under the pseudonym Larry Ludman, which is clearly a fucking pseudonym. Um, he, he's got a ridiculous filmography, and most of them are really schlocky rip- rip-offs of other bigger, better movies. So it does not surprise me that, you know, we would have the Italian take on the 84 classic, The Karate Kid. Um, Weirdly, this is like a a, a mishmash of The Karate Kid meets something like Kickboxer, which just feels like those two things shouldn't exist, but they do. And it's not as good as either one of those movies, if I'm honest, uh, considering we are really really ebbing the old Karate Kid thing here, not doing the old crane kick, but we're doing Stroke of the Dragon, which, interestingly enough, is the nickname I give going for a wank. So, um, that was a bit awkward when I was watching this. I was like, is he going for a wank? No, he's not. He's learning a new martial arts move and not stroking his dragon. Um, Yeah, right, let's go. I suppose we should just get into this. I will openly admit here, I had a fucking ball with this movie absolute cheesy nonsense it is pretty bad like on a scale of kind of competent storytelling to schlocky hacking slash of better much better movie uh, and segueing in to try and give your movie some sort of purpose that's kind of what's on display here what is really, really funny is Kim Rossi Stewart here is, is playing our hero Anthony Scott and they are desperately, desperately pushing him as, you know, the next big thing. And it's interesting that they say that he obviously goes on to become the next big thing in Italy from that description. But what makes me kind of laugh and smile about this one is doing a bit of research... Um, Kim Stewart only came back for the second out of the five movies and then that man quickly ran away, uh, you know, like, like away as far as he could from this movie and the franchise, uh, and the fact there's five movies in this makes zero fucking sense to me, I'd, like, I'd, I would be interested, well, don't say that, because then you'll have to watch them all, um, I'm inquisitively confused as why there are five, I'm assuming they're just basically rehashes of exactly the same movie here, um, I mean, it's, they've obviously shot it, in the Philippines to cut costs. A lot of Italian movies started doing that, specifically the cannibal movies. They found it cheaper to shoot over there than they did in Amazon, for example. So that's fine. Um, What's kind of funny about this movie is that Kim Rossi Stewart's martial arts skills are not necessarily all that great. So, and to be honest with you, his acting skills are not all that great either. And as a result, you end up with like a, a kind of really bargain basin Ralph Macchio um, with none of the skills of any martial arts at all. And watching it, it's like it's, it's like watching 
like the wooden acting of someone like a I don't want to say Chuck Norris. Do I want to say Chuck Norris? It reminded it reminded me of the wooden acting of a Chuck Norris, um, but with the youthful looks of a Ralph Macchio, uh, but with none of the charm that either one of those actors bring. Even Chuck Norris with his lack of emotions, um, he's just not a great front man or leading man in this movie at all. And the martial arts, no. If you remove him from that, the martial arts sequences in the movie are not terrible, but when you put him in, it's just a whole lot of shit. Um, the villain is a bit too moustache twiddling for me. The <laughs> the sensei, Master Kimura, um, is a bit too much trying to be Mr. Miyagi for my liking. He's not really nearly as kind of rough as I want from my sensei master in this. It's just a bit shit. Um, this is kind of co-written by Dardano Sar- Sarchetti, who you should all know out there as one of the guys that's behind a ton of these movies from this era. Um, and like, I-, I would highly recommend buying this, not only because the-, the restoration is actually really fucking good, but the special features are as interesting, if not better, than the movie itself. Um the cinematography work by Giuseppe Pinori is kind of cool. I really like the they really make use of the exotic location they're in, and that works really well for me. It gives a good backdrop to what, like I said before, is fairly good in acting. Also, the score in this one, the the score is really good. It kind of keeps things going. It's got a, a pulse and a beat to it, which is kind of fucking cool as well. And I enjoyed that aspect. I don't really have much to say. I really kind of hoped I was going to come in with tons of things to say. It is entertaining as fuck, this movie. There's no getting around it. If you have even a passing interest in cheesy martial arts movies, uh, Karate Warrior will scratch an itch for you. If you have a passing interest at all for horrible rip-off Italian genre movies, then once again... Uh, Karate Warrior is going to scratch an itch. If you're looking for any sort of quality or anything that is remotely like Karate Kid, then Karate Warrior doesn't actually come even remotely close to that. As a pale, pale, pale comparison by pretty much any metric you can measure it by. And what I found towards the end is that I just... I sat... like You know, like martial arts movies... You know, like really bad action movies, you can get like, I will hit you, now you will hit me. Now I will hit you, now you will hit me. And none of us will look like those hits have registered anything until one of them does, and then I am the winner. That is literally the fight scenes in this movie. It's to me, to you, to me, to you, to me, to you. It's the Chuckle Brothers. This is Chuckle Vision fighting, if ever I've fucking seen it. Um, It's just really uninspired, but... By God, is it fucking entertaining. So cheesy. So entertaining. So bad. Um, I don't know if I I can in good conscience recommend this movie, but I'm kind of glad that I own it. I imagine that I probably will check this one out again. I do not want 88 films to release any of the sequels, though, because I will end up buying them and watching them as well. And to be honest, a one and done in this is fine with me. Um, I have nothing else to say on Karate Warrior at all. I really want it to be spewing forth tons of stories but it really is exactly how the synopsis described and nothing more than that um yeah i I, I just a terrible b-movie rip off a karate kid and that's about it when it comes to giving it a grade i'm going three i can't go i want it realistically it's a 2.5 but i did have a lot of fun with it so it's a three i liked it i kind of hate myself for liking it but those are the price that you have to pay as you go through some of these collections. Occasionally you hate yourself for admitting that you like something that you objectively know is not good. So there we go. That's where I land with this one. Nothing else to say about Karate Warrior, folks. A 3 out of 5 from this guy. 